Okay, so I know it took a while to get the group set up, but once it's set up, this is where now we can get down to business and start using it as a tool. Um, the Google Groups is primarily used as a discussion tool where you post a question, a concern, a topic, a concept, and then you can write or type in a conversation about that topic. Once that starts, you're going to do that under Discussions. So you select the Discussion tabs and it will list the different topics that are open for discussion. Um, this is what it looks like. You're going to go ahead and then just choose one of those discussion threads that you want to participate in. There are three ways that you can participate in the discussion here. You can either forward the message to somebody else, you can reply to the author of the post specifically, or you can just reply to the Google Groups account for everybody to see. In the forward function, you're going to open, type in a email address, and then it just turns into an email that you're going to send to somebody else, to whatever email address that you add in there. Um, you can also CC or carbon copy other people to also receive that same message and your response to that message. Another way that you can participate in the discussion is that you can reply directly to the author of whatever post it is that you're replying to. If you select reply to author, you can then type in your response to whatever was said and that response doesn't go to the broader public, it only goes to the author. So it, the author will receive an email and that email message will have your reply or your response in it. The best way in my opinion to use Google Groups is to have students just reply directly in the Google Group because the purpose of this is to have a discussion and to hear what's on people's minds and to hear how people are responding to the posts and the replies of the other students. So by simply hitting reply, the student will then type in their response to the, the post and that response will then be available to everybody, for everybody to see. Another advantage to this is that it makes it a public statement rather than a private statement. Um, if it's a private statement, you, you know how it gets in emails that um, you, you tend to get a little snarky and mean and, and, and vicious when you're typing in, in an email because there's a disconnect. Um, by encouraging responsible discussion in a public forum um, will eliminate that by making sure that it is entirely reply. It also gives you the chance to see everything that is being said so that you can respond to it um, appropriately and to make sure that there is responsible academic dialogue that is happening within the Google Groups discussion. There's two ways that I've used this. One way is that in a small class um, I, I had the discussion that I was planning for in class, I had it happen online first. Um, this forced the students to think about the topic and think about the responses before they came into class for the in-class discussion. I would post the topic, the students were required then to um, research their, their answer or the responses to the answers, um, and that would prepare them for the day that they came in later for the in-class discussion. I would post a discussion topic um, or a question and the students would then have to answer it. Um, I set my Google Groups up in a tree format so that I could see who was posting what. Later I also realized that I needed students to post their real names. Initially I let them do nicknames. Um, it's better if they have their real names down there um, so that we know who is saying what. Um, so in this example I posted a question, students then posted responses, and they also had to respond to other questions, responses as well. This was in preparation for or ahead of an in-class discussion. The other way that I've used Google Groups is as an extension tool for students that are working towards honors credit in my regular Modern World History class. So as this function, I've posted discussion topics where the students then had to do additional research papers or small research essays um, that align with the curriculum or the content that we're covering in class. Uh, I post the question, I post the guidelines, and the students have to research and write a short five paragraph essay on that topic. They post the essay in Google Groups. After the essays have been posted, those same students then need to read the other students' essays 
and post their responses or critiques of the essays. The reason I like doing it in the Google Groups is it allows all the information, all the essays, all the responses to be in one place in an organized fashion so that I can then go through there and I can see how they're responding to each other, what's being said. So those are the two ways that I've used Google Groups. I'm sure there's lots of other ways. As you guys start using Google Groups or as other people use Google Groups, I'm always interested in seeing how people, other people are using this tool as well because I think it's very, very useful um, even though it is restricted to just discussion purposes, discussions are always good. I like to see how other people are using the discussions as well.